Hey, look, something else, Chewy. Create your smart life. Coolbook X, all the power to satisfy your mobile needs. Uh, I feel quite satisfied in my mobile needs. Uh, so this is the Coolbook X with the Ryzen 5 7430U. I did order the 16 gig, 512 gig storage combo Australian version. So they sent this USB-C power supply. Yeah, uh, don't plan on using it. Uh, being in Australia, of course, uh, ordering the Australian version, they ship the European power adapter or power cable with a lovely adapter here, or death adapter, with a, again, no insulation on the pins, no worries, it's fine. Uh, again, not a review, because I'm not a reviewer. I just bought this and I love it. So bottom cover is aluminium and you know, get all the screws there. Some nice hidden ones under these feet. Uh, you may need to replace the double-sided tape on the feet when you peel them off because it doesn't like to come off easy, even when heating it up with like a hairdryer. Um, you need to remove the screws on this cover as well because uh, that screws straight into like the chassis to remove the back cover. Uh, no clips or anything like that. So once all the screws are out, including these hidden ones under these two feet at the back, uh, it's all good. So yeah, bottom's aluminium. Uh, this top cover's aluminium. Uh, I, I'm not sure about this. Oh no, I touched the screen. I'm not sure about this. Uh, it feels like aluminium, but uh, inside there was like a fair bit of plastic looking nut screws or nut sets or whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, pretty good. Not a review again, but you got some ports. So USB-C, USB-A, HDMI, USB-C. You can charge off both of those. And on this side, micro SD, headphone jack, USB-A, and a Kensington or security lock. So yeah, pretty good. Uh, display's awesome. Sound is fairly good. Uh, I did have issues occasionally where the sound would just stop working and then device manager uh, will show like a problem with the sound device. A reboot fixes that. There's updated drivers on Windows Update that you can get manually, which is kind of annoying to find. Uh, less likely to have an issue when using those ones, but still occasionally. Um, but yeah, build quality feels amazing. Um, I did a fresh Windows install uh, out of the box and then spent a long time trying to get the power profile function where you press FN and spacebar to change between profiles. Um, I had to download the, like, because the Chewy has the drivers, you can put your serial number in on the Chewy website and download drivers. Uh, but that particular piece of software uh, is only in the restore image, uh, which is, yeah, kind of annoying to get. Um, when I put my serial number in and got the restore image, uh, it was linked to like a third party file host and that required a subscription or a plan with them. So I had to actually pay to be able to download that. Um, and then yeah, it's not quite straightforward. I might try and make a guide on restoring that function. Uh, anyway, it is straightforward, but it's just annoying. You know, it would be cool if it was included in the driver package. Um, but yeah, other than that, the battery doesn't seem to have any tracking of battery health or cycle count because uh, my cycle count has never moved, never gone up, still says one or zero. Um, when the laptop is completely flat again, if you let it go, um, it will power off before Windows enters Hibernate. So like it'll like run out of power completely before Windows can safely uh, Hibernate or shut down. So I recommend you go into your power settings and bump up like the critical and the low battery levels, just so you have some buffer. When the battery is run completely flat, it completely erases the BIOS settings. So if you make any changes at all uh, to your BIOS, they'll all be gone if you let it go completely flat. But yeah, uh, Ubuntu, I used that, uh, tested that out. Everything works straight out of the box, which is amazing. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, if I can uh, find them, I took pictures of the insides because I replaced the RAM and storage. So with the two terabyte Crucial T500, which is my favorite drive. And then I had an old kit of uh, 64 gig uh, HyperX 3200. 
Uh, so I've got that in there. It ships with TWSC RAM, or well, at least mine did. And the default SSD was a AirDisc brand. So you want to go to the Chewy support website and the download section, put your serial number in, download the OS as well as the drivers. And then you should get these two zip files here. So extract those. And then in this one here, you'll have all the drivers. Uh, you can just get the chipset and the graphics driver direct from AMD and install those ones. And otherwise, you can install these ones if you like. Uh, but the main ones to worry about is this one here. So HKIO. And then once that's done, you would need to go into the OS recovery folder and then go to scripts. All right. And then you can right click this one here and click edit and basically scroll down until you find something about the uh, the power utility. So I might skip it because there's a lot of stuff you don't need to worry about yeah, this section here. So this is what you need to worry about basically. All right. So in this folder here, you got recovery test tool. So in recovery, you got OEM, scripts, and then power mode utility. So this is the software that controls the power control where you hold FN and spacebar. So basically just try and do roughly what it says here. So in users public, make a new folder called app, uh, and then basically copy this entire folder here into uh, C program files, power mode utility. So we'll go to C program files and just paste it in here. All right. And then if you notice, it does say down here as well, put it in system 32, just this one run.bat. So again, you copy that and then put it in system 32. So windows and then find system 32 and then just paste it in here. What I did after that, I ran that as administrator, rebooted, and then everything worked fine. Um, but yeah, basically install this that way. So ignore the W. Uh, I believe that's just like a for for recovery purposes when you're say booting and installing is from Windows recovery environment, not actually Windows. So then like the C drive will actually be W drive, so to speak. Uh, that's the way I got it to work. No like installer or anything simple. Um, I mean, it's not too bad. You just copy the folder into program files and then copy the bat file into system 32. Um, like I said, I, I ran that and it was fine. And then it just auto boots. I believe it integrates, uh, with that other driver, the HKIO, but I'm not hundred percent. So I think it all runs off of this one. For the updated sound driver. Just go to catalog.update.microsoft.com or Google Microsoft Update Catalog and then just do a search for Scenery space dash space media or even just Scenery probably would work, but I prefer that one. Hit search and basically that one there should be the latest one that's available that I've been able to find. So you just download that and then click the download link again in this page that pops up. And then it will download a cab file. So you can double click that or you can right click drag and extract it if you have 7-zip installed. And then you got this one here. So then you can go into device manager, find the auto device, right click on it, click update. Or you can right click and then click install and that should update to the latest driver. If you're not bored and haven't already left, here's some more boring stuff for you. So just pictures and video, every BIOS option available. The BIOS is dated 2025, so that's when it was built, but it is built with code that is old. So the AMD Agisa version is from 2022, and the CPU microcode is from 2020. So by default, Secure Boot is disabled, but you can enable it, no, not a problem. The firmware TPM does have an issue where attestation doesn't work at all. Uh, it is a known issue. AMD has a like a support guide on it and basically says refer to the system manufacturer for a BIOS update. I sent through a request to Chewy. I don't think they'll uh, do anything about it, but you never know, who knows. The system is pretty good, I think. Uh, the only thing that I don't really like is that the Wi-Fi is soldered 
so you can't upgrade the Wi-Fi. But yeah, no problem upgrading the RAM or storage.